All right, any questions, any problems you guys had in training? Can you please show the move that you did on Aaron? Yes. And then at the end, full speed. Yeah, so it's the triangle from, uh, from four point. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is a triangle setup I've been hitting uh, a lot lately. You can do it either from uh, two hooks or one hook situation. Okay, well we're in here. A lot of times it happens out of uh, one hook situations because I go to throw in this hook and they go to try and block. Okay, so this opens up a lot of room for uh, setting up triangles. So all I do is I post on my right hand, I kind of let my body sag off towards uh, my right hand side and I'm using my knee on his upper back to, to help carry my weight. Now from here, I just look to extend my right leg through. I begin falling down towards the mat and I switch from a, a control hand grip off to an underhook like so. Now from here, I'll just commit all the way down towards the mat. And then from here, it's fairly easy to start locking up a full figure four. Normally, if you have an ankle sinkaku, I always recommend grabbing the, uh, the second elbow and pulling it in for the finish. So that's slow, full speed, looks more like this. <clears throat> so I'm in here, I'm trying to get my, uh, my second hook in and he's blocking. I just fall off to the side and lock up my triangle. Oh, uh, is it JB? Uh, if you get caught in like a, if you're on your butt and you're pulling you into like a straight ankle situation, like you have me in the oh. and they're putting their foot here, and then this one, yeah, well that one didn't even go there. Usually it's here just off balancing me, so I can't get up. How, how do you deal with this kind of? Yeah, let me see. So he's in here and he's posting in this. Yeah, and I just can't seem to get up, or if I do get up, he's off balancing me so well and keeping me so far away. With yeah, that, uh, so initially I, I want to peel this out. It's super hard to just get up with this foot still in. So normally I like to kind of reach underneath and grab my own chin, and then I'll peel it. And at the same time as I peel it, I'm building up to my knee. Then from here, the next thing I want to do is I want to put weight back over this foot. So I'll just start building up to my hands and coming into like a four point uh, position so that I can start to drive. Now I can start to kind of come upright and look to peel feet out so I can put weight back over this leg. Okay. What do you like to do uh, when you're in a crucifix? Crucifix? <laughs> uh, top, uh, top leg, bottom leg? Ask them. <laughs> yeah, um, normally I like to try and use uh, my legs to get my arm free. So a lot of times I'll just start kind of shrimping out towards my left hand side and walking my legs in towards his. And I feel like a lot of times I can kind of start to hook over the top and drag it out enough so that I can start pummeling my arm through. Uh, so then essentially you're just going to end up in like a Tikimura position. And the way I normally like to get out from here is I start by trying to extend my arm so that he tries to pin my hand to my chest. And as I feel him pushing back, I just uh, tap his wrist with my hand. And at the same time, I'll just extend out like so. So now I can start to build up and threaten coming on top. Um, late stage defense for uh, Aoki. So usually like I'm trying to push into the lock to make it just a straight Achilles. But when my when my heel is caught on the rib cage, what do you like to do? Oh, fuck it. Just, yeah. So you're saying you're in here, you're in an outside Ashi? Uh, yeah, we say outside Ashi, yeah. Yeah, uh, and you're saying you, your heel is just stuck and you can't? Yeah, yeah. To be honest, your best bet is to just try and roll with it. Fuck. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fucked here, um, but like, I'm just gonna try and take a big step over and roll with it to try and slip through. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, can you demonstrate the uh, double leg you set up off of the over tie? You pull in, you create an angle, and then you shot a double after the thumb post? Um, I'm trying to think of. Can you show me which one that you're I can show about? you very shittily, yeah. Yeah, let's see. Can you show the move I'm asking? <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to car tie that over tie. Or I have it over yeah, here. I switch. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, so it'll be uh, right versus right. You take. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah. So uh, a lot of times when I'm, I'm looking to shoot doubles, okay, I'm always going to be circling away from the rear leg. Okay. If I try and thumb post here, he has a, a staggered stance, so it's it's going to be hard to get uh, both legs collected. Um, so whenever I'm looking to to shoot doubles, I'm always circling away. So I'm going to look to take an outside step. Okay. As I uh, I take an outside step, I'm just going to look to switch collar ties. So outside step. I switch collar ties and I continue circling so he's in a square stance. Then from here, as I get a pullback reaction from the snap, I just look to thumb post this arm up and I can start shooting into my doubles. 
Can you share some uh, toehold details for finish? Uh, for finishing? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so just start down outside Ashi. Yeah, so <clears throat> uh, number one, okay, obviously you always want to be gripping down at the end of the toes. Number two, a lot of people make the mistake of locking here high up on the, uh, the calf. Okay, it's kind of hard to get a lot of pressure here. What I want to do is I want to go elbow deep all the way down by his Achilles tendon, and then I look to lock up. Another mistake people make is they focus too much on just pushing the toes down, okay? But really, what you should be doing is you should be pushing the toes down as I'm also retracting my right elbow in. So when we go into it, number one, we have lock legs. We're always back heeling and pinching our knees together. Now from here, I'm pushing the toes down, but I'm also retracting my right elbow back towards my right shoulder. So from here, we retract the elbow back, and that's how we get a tight finish. Too often I see people doing stuff like this where they're just trying to push it far away and it's, it's gonna be pretty hard to get uh, breaks there. So instead, just focus on keeping everything in tight up here. I push the toes as I retract this elbow back and that's what allows you to start getting breaks. Uh, what's your preferred wrestle up option from uh, Delahiva? And is there a like a chain going from a Delahiva to a reverse Delahiva that you like to chain off of if it fails? Okay, so you're talking about, so first question, outside Delahiva, right? Yeah. Yeah, so my main uh, wrestle up from here is a situation where I can off balance him out towards the, uh, the right hand side and kind of get his hands down towards the mat. So I'll be active with my, uh, my butterfly hook like so. Now from here, I'm just gonna look to start lifting this ankle and at the same time, I'm gonna transfer over to my right hip. I'm also gonna be kicking in his far leg with my right leg and that's just gonna look to start off balancing towards uh, my right hand side and get his hands down towards the mat. Now uh, from here, uh, it depends on the placement of this leg. Sometimes you'll wrestle up into singles on this leg or if this leg's close enough where you can reach the ankle. And uh, normally what I do is I take my outside De La Hiva hook out I use my leg as a pendulum, I release the ankle grip. So I come up to like a hip and an elbow and I transfer to a situation like so where I have elbow deep on his, uh, on his leg and uh, another grip on his ankle. And then from here, I can look to just start scissoring my legs and pulling his heel towards my hip. That's probably my favorite way to wrestle up from there. What was the second question? And if say you're like in that Delahiva position, but then he makes you kind of go back to the inside, is there something that you like to chain off the failed outside wrestle up to like the inside wrestle up? Uh, so you're just talking about a situation We're where- We're just switching from a Delahiva to a reverse wrestle up, I guess. So like just a revert, like a wrestle up from a reverse being in a normal Delahiva, but yeah, I guess, yeah, just inside reverse Delahiva. Yeah. Um, from uh, reverse Delahiva, it's kind of the same thing. Okay, for this, you kind of need him pressuring into you. If he's more upright, then I'm more likely to just start inverting and going into legs. So he needs to be more in like a split squat situation for this. Uh, normally what I like to do is, I normally like to grab his wrist and I look to just plant my left leg on the mat as like a drive leg. And then I look to just elevate him overhead like so to get his hands to the mat once again. And then from here, normally the secondary leg is too far to reach on this one, so most of the time you're gonna have to come up on a single with that same motion that we saw from outside De La Hiva. Cool. Thank you. Can you, uh, can you show how to get up from, uh, and do that back take from 50-50? Yeah, the one I showed last time? Yeah, I think so. Okay, yeah. Like attacking 50-50? No, uh, no, no, you're, you're getting attacked. And you oh, come okay. The way. Well, which specific, you just any back take? Uh, like the, um, the wedging back take? The wedging back yeah, yeah. take, okay, yeah. Yeah, so we're in 50-50. So uh, in order to hit this wedging back take, okay, I need, to, I need to build up to my feet. So first, I'm initially gonna build up to a knee, so I'm gonna fold my left leg in, and I'm just gonna look to initially build up to a knee. Now, when I stand up, it's very important that I don't come up square, okay, because now I can hit an inside spin and then expose my heel. So <clears throat> when I stand up, Okay, so initially we're on a knee. When I stand up, I keep my knee and toes pointed in this direction, and I don't step my secondary leg up. So I come up like so. So now when he tries to hit that inside spin, it's gonna be super difficult. Now from here, I wanna get his hips off the mat. So I don't step up in this direction with my left leg, because again, he'll be able to inside spin. So I just start stepping closer and closer to his hips like so. Now from here, I just switch to a thumb post in his knee. I back step my left knee around the corner and then I just look to sit towards my left hip and transfer my leg across to come into this wedging back take. What do you do if he maintains like a deep Achilles grip? Uh, if he maintains a deep Achilles grip, yeah. So that's gonna stop wedging back takes, but you can still kind of slip your knee. So if he's in here, 
Okay, we'll do the same thing, we build up to a knee and eventually up to our feet. Now from here, if I feel like he has this, this elbow deep Achilles grip, what I'm gonna look to do is to transfer his feet to the inside. So I'll look to start scooping underneath this leg and then I'll look to start uh, using this my bicep to transfer his legs to the inside and at the same time I'm just gonna look to point my knee out in this direction. Sorry, my foot, this is my fucked up foot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that I can free my knee. Now from here you can either insert a reverse tight waist and then start going into passes or you can even back step around the corner and go into the wedging back take again. Okay, when you free your knee, his grip isn't effective anymore. Uh, you're turning out of the, the elbow deep Achilles grip, so it makes it pretty difficult. I can see if I can do it with this. Yeah, you just do the other leg. Yeah, so we're in here, we build up to our feet, we scoop underneath. I just transfer everything to the inside mm. and I just sit back. And your, your foot's rotating, so it's super hard for him to keep the elbow deep Achilles grip. Can you do a wedging back kick on me? So people are messing with this foot. Um, sometimes, are you all right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Sometimes they pass it across their lap. And yeah, people reaching for this foot and either like straightening it out and like keeping it against the chest or actually sometimes passing it across I end up like here. Yeah, yeah. So it, to be honest with you, if they pass it fully across, like you're, you're pretty fucked. Like you're not going to be able to, t to take the back from that situation. But uh, you can just lay on your back. So we're in like the wedding oh, back yeah. take position. Yeah, so we're in here. So you're saying that they start to scoop yeah, scoop that leg. leg. They don't let me like wedge my legs, lift their upper back by controlling that leg. Yeah, so if, if they pass it all the way across, like the chances of you taking the back are pretty slim here. Normally I like to kind of uh, disengage my legs. So I like to thumb post and clear this leg and then threaten sitting up into like passing situations. Now this is gonna kind of end up in a scramble because obviously he's not just gonna let me climb on top, um, but it's better than just getting your legs entered. Um, <clears throat> now. If we're in here and he just has like a, a like scoop, a scoop grip, grip and it's not passed across, I still feel like I can kind of go for the wedging back take. Um, so from here, I'll just look to start extending uh, this leg and, and lifting his hips off the mat slightly. Now from here, I just grab his hip and then I just start leaning out towards my right hand side. Now some, most of the time what's gonna happen, cause since he has the scoop grip, I have to exaggerate my turn towards the right, is he's gonna hop across. Okay, normally with wedging back takes, when he doesn't have this, I can pull this knee to my chest and that lifts his hips uh, way closer to me, but when I can't bring this knee to my chest, I have to exaggerate my turn out in this direction. So he's gonna look to hop across, and then I start coming into like this uh, octopus guard uh, reach around uh, grip. Then from here, I normally like to, to start heisting up to my knee and bringing it out like so. From here, it kind of depends what he does. If he sits to this hip, I just re-roll through and uh, re-attempt the, uh, the wedging back take. If he stays on his knees, I just look to extend this leg through and then turn my heel in as I start sitting down. And then I can start hooking into this leg, elevating him back, and then switching off into crossbody ride. Okay, sick. So I'm playing from K guard, and I guess it's a backside 50-50 hook. I don't know names. I'm having a hard time keeping the knee on the mat. They're getting that knee off the mat, it's relieving pressure for them. Okay, let me see. So you're saying you're in K guard, and then from here you leave this foot all the way through. Yeah, yeah. And you're in this position, and then what are they doing? They're getting that knee off the mat, and it's making it hard to finish, like that okay. hook. Uh, number one, do you have a figure four locked yet? No, I'm not locking figure four. Okay, yeah. so uh, yeah, as soon as we pass this foot through, okay, what I wanna do is I wanna actively scissor my leg. So I'm kinda extending my left leg as I'm bringing my right knee into my chest, okay, and that'll put a lot of weight on him, okay, especially once you lock a figure four. So now when he tries to, to free his knee from here, it's gonna be way more difficult and I can pass it across. I can also turn my left knee in towards the mat and that'll help pin it down. So when he tries to straighten his leg now, it's gonna be super difficult because his foot's off the mat and I'm putting weight behind his knee and that'll make it easy to transfer it across. There it is. Awesome. Let's say someone's hitting like a, like a double unders guard pass on you. Do you have like a way of like building back up to, oh sorry, back up, like 
getting under those arms where they can't just keep forcing themselves under you. Okay, so are you talking, uh, so I'm in guard, he's in what, top half guard with double uh, unders? No, so he's just like, he's got both double unders for the guard and then he's gonna pass either side. Oh, scoop grips, scoop? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh scoop okay. grips, okay, sorry. sorry. my bad. Australians. So you're saying like this? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so <clears throat> uh, initially what I wanna do, okay, is I wanna uh, elevate my hips off the mat and I wanna take two thumb posts on his wrist. So, okay, if I just stay here, it's gonna be super easy for him to start throwing legs to the side and then passing. So initially what I wanna do is I shoot my hips off the mat and I, at the same time, I take two thumb posts in his hands like so. Now, as he continues to try and throw legs to the side, I just look to shoulder walk back until I can slip my legs back inside. So you're just like straightening your arms. Yep, just well. straightening your arms and legs and you shoulder walk back until yeah, you can so get at least one leg in. Yeah, uh, even if he, if he, now if he does manage to throw legs to the side, Okay, what you wanna do is you wanna thumb post in the elbow, and as he throws it by, you're gonna look to build up to your right elbow and use this post in the tricep to keep him away. So now he can't square up with you because of this elbow grip, so I can just shrimp out and look to reface him. And what do you like to do when you take a shot and your opponent gets a head and arm control on you, threatening a guillotine? Yeah, so <clears throat> um, I shoot a double. Okay, and he's, he's uh, in a situation like so, or a situation where he's in guard? Something like that, yeah. From here? Yeah. Yeah, so whenever my opponent uh, attacks a front head and I feel like I'm not gonna be able to finish the double, okay, maybe he's also, sprawl? Just, sprawl? Step, just step your legs back. Yeah, like this, I feel like I'm not gonna be able to drive through. What I like to do is I like to post my outside leg up and my right hand looks to transfer to his hip, and at the same time, I just look to grip his elbow. Now from here, I look to build up to my feet I actively push his elbow across and I think about sliding my head towards his far armpit. I also like to add in a circle out towards my left hand side at the same time. So I circle to my left, I'm posting on the hip, pushing on the elbow and I just look to start sliding my head to the inside. Sometimes you can go into sucker drags but if your opponent's good most of the time they're just going to look to square up with you. How do you defend spinning the, when they spin the leg from outside ash? Oh, okay, I know what you're talking about. So like start outside Ashi on this leg. And then they build up to their knees. Yeah, most of the time I like to uh, kind of go into like Craig's reach around grip. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll post my right foot on the mat and my right hand will just look to cup inside the hip. Then I'll look to uh, throw my hips off the mat using my right leg. And at the same time, I just look to kind of invert this knee like so. And then from here, I feel like a lot of the times I can look to start to extract it and start reaching for like my inside thigh. And then again, it kind of depends what he does here. I'm either gonna look to sit through and do a position like so, or if he uh, sits to this hip, then I just look to roll over the right shoulder and go into wedging back takes. Yeah, I like to post, cup the hip, and then like invert this knee. That grip is what's really keeping you safe. Yeah. So yeah, they go to spin the leg. I post my uh, right foot on the mat right hand cups inside his hip. I drive off my right foot and I just look to invert this knee through. Then from here, I can start reaching for my own hamstring. If he just stays here, I sit back down to the mat or if he sits to his hip, which a lot of people do, I just kind of re-roll through and we're in that wedging back take situation. Damien, do you think that is like stronger than <laughs> the, you don't think so? Or do you, what happens when people do this to you? Well, that, this works when I don't control the, uh, the Achilles. Like if you okay, yeah. if you have an overhook, then you'll you'll get a dip. If they have an elbow deep Achilles grip and they're not fishing for the heel, it's going to be difficult. But in order from the spin they're going to be fishing for the heel. He has to release the, the elbow deep Achilles grip. Like if okay. he wants to spin the cross Ashi, he has to release the elbow deep yes, Achilles yes. grip. Do you have any good follow ups to stop that? Well, I mean, yeah. What, what I do is this, I mean, what would you get, do against my uh, infamous switch off? <laughs> like, I, I control, I don't grab an Achilles grip like so, I, I control like so. Just stay very snug. Yeah, so if, if his legs aren't locked, then a lot of times I'll probably, I'll honestly look to do a similar thing, uh, but I'll look to separate his legs first, so I'll just look to start V-gripping and thumb posting this away, and then I still feel like I can kind of uh, invert this knee and start to heist up. And then you can reach for upper body grips, you can re-roll through, do things like that. But if his legs aren't locked, I'll just look to thumb post it out to create a little bit more space and then do the same thing. Sweet. And uh, Andrew Tackett, it works for him. <laughs> <laughs> I got a quick one from standing. Yeah. Um, can you stand with me, Damien? Yeah. A lot of times I get an inside tie on this side. 
And if they get elbow control, I have a bunch of stuff. And if they try to fight inside, I got all my passes. But mm -hmm. when they come over the top and fight a thumb inside, yeah, uh, yeah, from here I have a lot of trouble. I feel like I just have to reset. Okay. So you're saying you have inside tie and then they're just reaching over? Yeah. Uh, honestly, a lot of times I like to take cross grip, so I'll just take my right hand through and I look to cross grip it and then I look to circle away and at the same time I just peel and pull so I can start shooting into singles on this side. You're reaching under? Yes, yeah, so I reach under, uh, underneath like this and I just take a cross grip and then I circle right as I level change down towards my left. Sick. Um, All right, anyone else? Good? All right, thank you. Yeah.